All right. We need to start this Monday edition of Brother From Another off talking about March Madness. And no, I'm not talking about the Sweet 16 on the men's side or South Carolina, Caitlin Clark on the women's side. We are talking about LSU, though, except we're talking about Kim Mulkey putting the mad in March Madness. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't going to work, buddy. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up. And I'm not going to let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country. And I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable. But I am. And I'll do it. Uh, the lady doth protest too much. Uh, professor, Woo! professor, uh, remind everybody the uh, the class or classes you teach at BU, professor. Uh, several classes, uh, Mike. Uh, In-depth reporting, uh, news writing and reporting, uh, sports journalism. Um, all, all sorts okay. of uh, news classes, all, all sorts of news classes okay. at BU. All right, and I got to tell so you, so beyond our beyond our experience oh, in yeah, this business, uh, you're you're more than qualified to uh, to address the the ethical conversation uh, around uh, Kim Mulkey's uh, preemptive preemptive uh, opening salvo, if you will, against the Washington yeah. Post, trying to get out ahead of it. Trying to get out ahead of it. So, Professor, yeah, I, it, it's break it down. Okay, Mike. Listen, as as a uh, consumer of news, just like you are, I read all sorts of newspapers, at, at newspapers that I agree with, newspapers that I disagree with, newspapers that are just there. I have no opinion on left-leaning newspapers, right-leaning newspapers, neutral newspapers, if there are any of those left in these uh, yet to be United States of America. Uh, I read the Washington Post is one of the papers that I read. Now, I don't read it every day. My wife reads the Washington Post every day. Every day. Loves the Washington Post. I don't read it every day. Uh, I wasn't thinking about the Washington Post on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday. <laughs> wasn't thinking about it. I was not thinking about the Washington right. Post. I was not thinking about Kip Babb, good reporter. Uh, I remember when Kip Babb worked at the Kansas City Star back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was working mm -hmm. on a book and met a young Kent Babb and knew he was destined for great things and good for him. He's been at the Washington Post. But I wasn't thinking about Kent Babb or the Washington Post until Kim Mulkey comes out. I think with this for statement a lot of people. on the like what? What are you talking they were, about? They were I popping bottles. They were popping bottles in the office of the Washington Post. <laughs> it's like, they say, thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. We, uh, I mean, I you know, we were going to run it regardless, and, and we hope that, you know, our, our readers are, are informed and educated and entertained uh, by the writing and reporting of the story. But now, Kim Mulkey, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to see what, like a, what's out there. That was there. like a blockbuster movie trailer. That was like a summer right. blockbuster I, movie trailer right there. I mean, You're going to have people reading the I Washington mean, Post that don't read papers at all. <laughs> I don't know. They'll, they'll find she the aggregated right. version of it. <laughs> yeah, maybe the story's unfair, Mike. I, I don't know. Maybe the story's unfair. Maybe the story's That's the thing. Maybe it's, we don't maybe know. it's fair. 
But can we wait for it to be published? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But why this? What is out there? Now it makes me wonder. It makes me even more curious. What are you trying to protect? What are you trying to hide? What is being said? What kind of questions were you asked? And by the way, uh, you know, I don't know the whole timeline of this this investigation or this feature story, whatever it is uh, that Kim Babb is working on the Washington Post. I do know this from Kim Mulkey's words. If he has been trying, Babb, I'm talking about, if he's been trying to interview her for two years, <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, it didn't come down to Tuesday. Hey, I got some questions. You not you need to answer these questions right now. I'm guessing if he's been trying to interview you for two years, maybe a year ago, this time last year. He gave you an opportunity to answer some questions. And then six months ago, he gave you an opportunity to answer some questions. Then three months ago, he gave you an opportunity to answer some questions. Then finally, he said, okay, I'm going to do the story. The time is right for the story. There are so many eyeballs on women's basketball. LSU is there. Angel Reese, Kim Mulkey. This is the coach. She coached Brittany Griner. She has some things to say about Brittany Griner that we didn't appreciate here on Brother from Another. All sorts of things. Right. Okay. Or she didn't say Now that, is the anyway. time. I'm yeah. going now here. The story's yeah. going to be published published coach Malky. Are you here's your time to declare or not? Are you coming or are we going without you? And that's how it goes. She knows better and a lot of people don't a lot of people listening to her because she did a great job of conflation. I got to give it to her. Excellent oh, job. She had all the talking she, points. All the oh, talking points. Yes. The media. And, oh, it's I the know. Media. Oh, the media. Ooh, I wish. Oh, can I whistle? <laughs> If I could do the whistle like Phil Jackson, oh, the whistles mm-hmm. are all over the place. The, the yeah. you know, the media and they're fed and people don't trust journalists and all of these. So if you're one of those people, that's right. That's right. They came after <laughs> me too. They did it. Yeah. Okay. That's they cute. came after my president. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that really? Right, right. That's really. Yeah. That's really. Yeah. She's, like, like, she's excited. Yeah. She's animating that base. Yeah. Absolutely. She's animated. Absolutely. She's getting it going. Hey, Coach Malky, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I really don't know much about her. I know uh, she was a baller in college. I know she has done a great job at a couple of programs on the surface. On the outside looking in, I got to give her a prop. She's been a cha- She's a championship coach and she's won championships in multiple places. I know she uh, wears like the, these costumes. <laughs> on the sideline. Well, that's a, that's a bit much. But I don't know. I don't know what's in that feature. But I sure as hell. She, I, I, I'm she gonna doesn't read either. that thing. She doesn't start either. To finish. Like she may think she knows, but she doesn't truly know either. The most hilarious thing would be if this story came out and it was pretty mild, all things considered. Like she is to your point, she has built up the anticipation to where like what if it's not a hatchet job? What if it's not a hit job? What if because he's an actual journalist working for a credible uh, establishment such as the Washington Post, which by the way, I don't think they're afraid of your lawsuits. I think they got some libel lawyers of their own. I think they, I think they kind of cover their tracks when it, this is not their first rodeo when it comes to somebody <laughs> threatening to sue the Washington Post. It's like, you know what? Sure thing. You know, we eat breakfast 300 yards away from 4,000 Cubans trained to kill us. Okay, they're not concerned about your lawsuit threats, all right? Anyway, um, like, what if they didn't confirm yeah, I mean, I, it's somebody else? Can I just say this? Yeah. Can I just yeah, say go this? Ahead. It's, yeah. They're the Washington. I, I, not Washington <laughs> State, are, it's we're DC. A, we're a national organization. We're, we're a national <laughs> okay. organization. It's the Washington, DC. You don't think right. you don't think presidents and senators and representatives have come Hello? for the Washington all Post the, and it's all the president's men. The have you ever Watergate? I mean, come on, like, like, like this is oh, not a Kim fight Mulkey. you want to. It's not a fight you want to pick, and this is not a but fight Kim she's going to win. Yeah. Kim Mulkey has too many people who don't f- with her. She has some fans, and she has a lot of people who don't f- with her. To where you're not going to win this PR battle. But what I was saying was, like, what if the the accusations? that she thinks may be in there aren't actually in there. Can we see the right. story first? Can we? So I'm going to reserve judgment until I read several times this anticipated article. And speaking of this anticipated article, so apparently she's pissed at the Post and Kim Babb 
because of a head job they did on LSU football coach Brian Kelly a couple of years ago, right? Apparently, I'm told, according to my sources, that the second most read sports article on the Washington Post right now is Babs' piece on Brian Kelly in Baton Rouge from two years ago. So, like, people are like, wait, what is she so mad about? Like, t- tell them why you're mad, mad rapper. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm mad. I'm going to well, tell you why I'm mad. Because of, because, because of Brian Kelly. Go ahead. I know why she's mad, though. Look at it. Okay, keep that up there. Keep that, keep that graphic up. So, Bab, and I saw this over the weekend, too. He goes, hit piece, and he links to the story. And right there, look at that little cut line. In Baton Rouge, uh, and I'm not trying to do a little accent here either, Mike. I'm just saying it. You know, the way I was taught in the Midwest to say Baton Rouge. We're going right. over capitals. Right. We're going over capitals right. in the fourth grade. All right. Uh, yeah. There's a $100 million football coach and everyone else. So that's the problem. That's why it's a hit piece because there's a focus on money because he brought up money for, for Brian Kelly you know, and everybody yes. and everybody else who doesn't have the money. And you, you know, know what, so you know what I, I, you know what I find when it comes to hit pieces, Michael, that hit dogs holler. Okay. Yeah. Couple other couple other bones I have to pick when it comes to uh, her tirade. LSU getting ready for their first round game. I don't mean to like minimize the amount of preparation and professionalism and practice and study that goes into what these phenomenal women do, these phenomenal athletes yeah. do. But it's LSU's first round game. Like Kim Mulkey could have spent more time preparing her outfit, laying her outfit out on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> then she needs to prepare for LSU's first round Let's see some more outfits. Let's see some more outfits. Let's see some more. Number Let's two. Some more. Let's Number two. Some more. Number two. You had two days. It takes you two seconds to read an email. It takes you two hours to reply to an email. If he emailed you the questions. And two days is plenty of time. That's a generous amount of time to respond to just about anything. They were knowing there was no way we could respond. You had two days. You make time for what you want to make time for. And speaking of which, and listen, I said before, Michael, plenty of times, I've never, or at least I've tried to never conduct myself as a reporter, as a journalist, with a sense of entitlement. I think a lot of us have a right. sense of entitlement that we are oh, owed amen. access or that we are owed time or we are owed Preach. information. I, yep. Maybe it's got to do with starting as well, a is who I am, but it, I think maybe it has to do with starting out at the Boston Globe covering the Patriots because they gave you nothing and you were going to like it. And so I never expected anything from the people that I covered. Having said that, a surefire way to get ahead of the story is to cooperate and conduct the interview. I don't know anytime over the last two years. Own the story. Throw on some of that Southern charm. You know, like he's got anonymous sources, whereas you're speaking on the record. That's journalism 101. Like right. you can get out in front of it if you actually do the interview. Don't get pissed when he's been trying to interview you for two years and then two days before your first round game still gives you the ethical journalistic opportunity to respond to what's going to be in the article. And then you want to come out and instead of responding to him, take it to the streets. Okay, since you took it to the streets, like this is this is PR. This is such a PR failure. And honestly, Michael, what it is, is it's representative of what happens when an omnipotent college coach goes unchecked. And with all due respect, has too many people around her that she doesn't listen to because some trained PR professional in the sports information department at LSU should have said this ain't it. This is this is not the way to handle this. This is not the way to handle it. I don't know. Somebody you you got to I I I know right right nobody Nobody. right but I'm saying like you would think that there would be somebody around her to say hey you know what you're going to do if you approach it like this you're going to draw more attention to it. People are going to already rush to judgment before the stories have already come out and already make determinations before the stories already come out based on how they feel about you already. Hey, how about this? How about you respond if and when it comes out accordingly? And guess what? 
in the 24-7, 2024 news cycle, people are going to forget about it quicker than you realize. Ain't nobody forget checking for Kim Mulkey like that. Ain't nobody, right. ain't, ain't nobody, in two days, well, by the time y'all get it. to the final four, nobody's going to care. It's going to, uh, unless it's that scathing, unless it's that damning, because I believe the Washington Post motto is, democracy dies in the dark. Well, we also live by what's done in the dark comes to light. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I just don't understand. I don't understand why what was she, she thinking? Did. Because I don't she, hubris, why. hubris. Why? Why? She because she's been able to like because she's been able to rule with an iron fist, and she can't control the media, and she gets pissed when somebody just da- dares defy her ruling and don't 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 come for me unless I send for you type thing. It's like, you, you know, nobody. First of all, nobody's perfect, right? Everybody's complicated. So he, maybe he does the definitive Kim Mulkey piece. Maybe it's a definitive Kim Mulkey profile. It shouldn't be all roses. It shouldn't be be a, a puff piece. Right. You know what I mean? It it, it's going to be credible journalism. And maybe there'll be some complications. Maybe there'll be some things that, you know, aren't the most flattering. But any great figure in history, leadership is lonely. Any great figure in history, there's going to be some good. There's going to be some bad because you're human. It's like for you to come out you know, again, the lady doth protest too much. It just, it's like even if he doesn't unearth it, there's something there. It may not be in this article, but there's something right. there. Whether it's revealed or not this time out, there's something there that she's hiding. And somebody just should have pulled her by her blazer and said, hey, coach, how about you just play basketball? How about just playing basketball? Because if you got, if you have all these positive stories about you, if you ha- if you have all these shoulder pads, players who swear by you, shoulder pads, who swear by you, they will come to your defense. They will come to your defense. Right. This this was this was just right. this was a bad poor I'll poorly executed this. game plan by one of the greatest coaches in basketball history. Poorly executed game. You, plan. you said you you said some smart things. You said some really smart things. I'm gonna leave you with a couple. And I don't know if I ever told you this before. A couple. Hmm. Uh, one, you talk about profiles and how they shouldn't be puff pieces. And one mm-hmm. of the things I've shared, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but I've, I've told this uh, to some students who are working on profiles. And I say it's still, it's supposed to be a balance. It's supposed to be a balance Correct. and not Correct. an artificial balance, but it's just thorough. The more people you talk it's to, supposed to be holistic, the more layered, yeah. the more, right. the more complete. And you ain't got is. critics. You ain't doing it right. You're and supposed to talk to right. critics. <laughs> so when, when when we were both working at the Boston Globe, you probably got this uh, too. Every now, this mm-hmm. is before I was teaching. I had students from BU and BC and Northeastern used to come to me and say, hey, I got a class assignment. I've got to write about a journalist. Can I write a story about you? And I'd always say yes. I'd never turn anybody down, but I, it was always mm-hmm. with the caveat. I'd say, mm-hmm. yes, you can. But once you... I don't need to see the story before it's done. After you finish the story, you turn it in, you get your grade. I hope you get an A. Uh, after you turn the story in, hey, can I take a look at it? And they'd say, sure. And they'd follow up. And I'd look at these stories, and they all had this through line of positivity. So the next time, the next time I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this. I said, wait until the next, next student asks me to do a story. Sure enough, student asked, Hey, can I do a story? I said, yes, you can. I got two things for you now. One, I'd like to see the story once you turn it in. But two, I need you to contact my ex-girlfriend. Okay? <laughs> right. I need you to contact my ex-girlfriend, and I want you to ask her about me. I'm talking about an ex-girlfriend who, you know, hear the name Michael Holly, and before I talk, she might spit before she starts talking. I said, I need that kind of detail in there because I don't want you to write some story that is not representative of all the things I've said, all the things I've done, all the things I've done. The so sure enough, I made. Right. Sure enough, she did it. And that's the point. I just wanted to get the point. I was teaching her before I even taught. This is what you do. You try to get as many, not that you're looking for dirt, but there are parts of my life that you've just skipped over let alone the students who kept saying I was from Columbus and I told them Akron people told them I was from the people the, the students who wrote I was from Cleveland 
Akron. I'm taking points off there. I never told you I was from Cleveland. Where'd you get that from? That's one thing. But then mm -hmm. the second thing you said was, hey, you, it, we're not entitled to information. I agree with that 100%. To the point, to the, I, I get down to the details. When I was writing articles and somebody didn't comment, I wouldn't even write, they declined to comment. I wouldn't write that. I'd mm. say, they elected not to mm. comment. Just mm. because I thought decline was negative. So I, mean, mm. I take that seriously. But on the flip side, one of the most famous stories in journalism history was written in 1967 uh, by a guy, a guy named Gay Talese. The story is called Frank Sinatra Has a Cold. It was written by, it was written, uh, it, was, it, it was published in Esquire. And the story is famous. Why? Because Gay Talese was assigned to write about Frank Sinatra and Frank Sinatra never agreed to an interview. Correct. And yet Correct. the story is a classic. What's the point? The story is going yep. to be written whether right. you cooperate you or not. And those are some of the best, to your point. Like, the, so you, the, like, so you might as well jump not in there. Agree. That's, a, that's, that's the, the best journalists do that. The best journalists find a way to write about somebody, whether or not they talk to that person directly or not. And nine out of ten times, the other people around that person in that person's orbit are give you better information than the person will first person anyway, or at least you talk to them first and bring better information to the table. No, I, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that on, on, on those uh, masterclass points you just brought up, man. Like, yeah, well, I, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you the flaw, yeah, though. I tell you the flaw in retrospect uh, uh, of telling that student to contact my ex-girlfriend. It might have been seen as a passive aggressive way of kind of rekindling something, which was not the point. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't trying to do that. That wasn't the point. But I can see how it might be misinterpreted. But yeah. um, I digress. And the other point, well, one other side note, and this is this is this is as the as the the term media has gotten muddied, because media means a lot of things nowadays. Media does not mean what it meant in 1967 or even in 2001 at the Boston Globe, right? It's just, it's evolved to say the least, which is a whole nother conversation, but everybody else, I assume knows what I'm talking about. It's like, there's this new thing where the subjects, they want to, it's not a new thing. It's just, it's always been a non-starter, but it seems to be something that's more acceptable nowadays because more and more people seem to be asking for it. The subjects want the questions ahead of time. I'm, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon? <laughs> the question is ahead of time. You're not, right. you're not getting approved. You're not getting approval over this. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not getting to choose, pick and choose. Like either you're going to do the interview or you're not. So again, she can complain all she wants about it only being two days of advance notice. That's all you're entitled to. Some people won't. Yeah. Some people won't give you that long. Some people will say, "Hey, this is going, going out in the you. morning. You, this is you going out to tomorrow." Go. Or they'll just go. To, right. Or they'll just go. After two exactly. years. Exactly. After two years, like, okay. All right, this is what it is, then. I, I think we're just gonna go. But I, I think uh Mike, and this is not just an LSU story. Uh this happens at LSU and Ohio State and and USC had a thing too a while uh, we we talked about it earlier this year, where they just wanted to manage the media. I didn't like that either. These are great, by the way, great journalism schools. USC Great journalism school, uh, Arizona State, you know, BU, like all these places, we have great journalism schools, but the people in charge or the people with the power don't want to accept that journalism is happening. And so they try to control it or they try to squash it. But if, if I were, if I were in one of these positions, uh, I would say if I'm, you know, Kim Mulkey, Brian Kelly, anybody else, I need somebody on staff who will say, you know what, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. No, right. you're wrong. You don't need yes men you, or women. You need to pay somebody to tell you if you're too insecure. Pay somebody to tell you that you're wrong, and I'm and sure a PR job firm would have. Give them. The I'm sure a PR firm keeping their job. would have would have told her or them, this isn't this isn't a battle you want to fight. You don't, certainly don't want to start this fight. Being the aggressor in this instance is not in your best interest. Now, listen, I'm sure anybody that's indulged us for as long as we've been talking about this and has listened to this conversation, thank you. But it's probably being like, of course, these two clowns gonna cape up for the media. They're in the media. Like, what else y'all yeah. gonna say? Of course, of course, y'all gonna see it from the media side. 
No, not necessarily. Yes and no, I would say. Because, again, I want to read the article first before yeah. I judge the content of it to Cause it you might know, be determine terrible. whether or not it's credible. It, it might be awful. But <laughs> I don't know. Or, 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 or it, may, it may not be as scathing as she thinks, or it may be fair. Because my only objective as a journalist has always been to be fair. I'm not here to be nice. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to be fair. Nobody can... It, all I want is if somebody decides to talk about me as a journalist and they say, you know what? I didn't always agree with him or but he was fair. He tried to get it right. Yeah. Okay. The only thing that alarmed me, the one I do. So in fairness, I was alarmed. And again, I respect Kent Babb's work. Um, so I, 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 I'm inclined to think this was is not true or some sort of embellishment. But when she claimed it's just her side that he, uh, was kind of uh, misrepresenting Kim Mulkey's participation in the project and would call colleagues of hers and say, I'm with Coach Mulkey, you know, it, it, to, to, to get them to talk. That's unethical. I, I, I hope yeah, he didn't do right. that. I haven't been, did, did he, I don't know if he addressed that on Twitter or not. I haven't, been, I haven't been reading his Twitter feed to see. I don't know if he's addressed it or not. I hope that's not true. And the other part about uh, giving them anonymity in exchange for negative commentary on Kim Mulkey, is that their interpretation? Or is that her assumption? I doubt that he said, I doubt seriously that he said, hey, listen, you talk shit about Kim Mulkey, I'll keep it off the record. I mean, I'm sure I, look, most people give off the record, uh, you know, to, to protect from any kind of retribution so that sp people can yeah. speak freely. But I doubt that that's what he led with. It's like, hey, give me something negative and I'll give you all, and, I, and, I, and I'll keep it off the record. So that, that seems like an embellishment. But again, if either of those things are true, that's not cool. Even from hey, the Washington Mike, just Post. Say, I'll say, last thing I'll say about it is this. I'm not caping up for the media. I'm just amused that she went to these lengths before a story was published. So I no, that's absolutely no. I'm, ass, I'm yeah, assuming exactly. that so people I, I'm, I'm assuming not, that people will I'm, assume that we're biased is what is why I said that. Yeah, uh, yeah, because probably, of, because probably, of what whatever, we do. But, yeah, you know, right. But, uh, yeah. but I'm not on. Yeah. I'm not on his side. I, no. I, I'm not on his side right. because I don't know what. You don't know what the story says. I right. don't know what the work is. Know the I don't says. know. <laughs> I don't know. And, he, and, he, and even then, but it, it, and I wasn't going to read even it. Then, Sorry, kid. What is it? Not personal. What's the saying? I wasn't going to read it. Saying? But now I am. Half of, Believe half of what you hear and none of what you read, or you know what I'm saying, or, uh, yeah. or uh, uh, you know, the, the lie is halfway around the world before the truth gets his pants on. It's like even after we read it, we still have to take it for what it's worth, and still have to be right. intellectually curious enough to not take it as gospel. Um, who who said it is? Is uh, it's not it's not Tennessee Williams. Who who said that? Um, who said that journalism is writing what they don't want you to write? Everything else is just PR. It's PR. Who is that? Yes. Who is that? I don't know. That's not that's, it's a famous quote, but it's great. It's great. I, yeah, yeah, I've used that. Many I, times. I, 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 I should know that. So let's pivot to another uh, investigative situation involving Shohei Otani. Um, mm. And I bring this up as we record here at just after 1030 Eastern uh, yeah. on Monday, March 25th, um, because Shohei is supposed to address the media later today. Ooh. So just like we don't know what's in Kent Babs watching the post story on Kim Mulkey, we don't know what he's going to say. So there's some risk in even broaching this subject because the story is going to change. Hell, by the time anybody consumes this content, the story probably will change. So I, so staff members here at NBC Sports and Brother From Another, I am doing this knowing that it's probably going to be dated. I apologize. But I think the conversation will still stand up nonetheless because we have a broader conversation yep. beyond the specifics of what Shohei may or may not say through a new interpreter. So um, listen, Mr. My Bet Your Money. You know the story. Everybody knows the story by now. Okay. It's arguably right. as big a story as there is in sports right now. I'll just ask you this. What, what do you want to hear from Shohei Otani? What do you need to hear 
from show. Was that the right question? Is that the right question? That's Open-ended, right que- neutral, that's exactly right and question. lean. Open-ended, neutral, and lean, baby. Right? There Take it go. away. <laughs> that's exactly the question. I'm going I'm to tell you, okay? Go ahead and judge me if you want to. I don't care. I told you already. I'm imperfect. I want more imperfection to come out. All right? This is what I'm not running from anything. I hope Shohei Otani comes out and blames it on somebody else. It's somebody else. <laughs> I was just being a good friend. I ain't had nothing to do with it because he's the best player in baseball. He's the best player I've seen in my life. I don't want to see him suspended for a game, five games, a hundred games, two years. Please, Shohei, have it be somebody else's problem. You just being a good neighbor. You just trying to help a brother out. He didn't have a lot of money. He had a problem. He, he, he told you he was going to get it right tomorrow. He told you he was going to get it right next month. And you said, okay, just this last time, okay, you can use my name this last time. That's what I want to hear. I'm this telling is, this you. This is I, Mike, Mike, Mike. I just don't want Shohei to be in an alley getting hit with a trumpet by Samuel L. Jackson. Ooh. That's, that's I, that, bruh, that scene, I just, I just had a flashback. I just had a Please. flashback to Mobetta Blues. This Please. is this is shorty. This is shorty. Okay, this is straight. This is some straight shorty Mobetta Blues shit. You were saying. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. I, in, in all seriousness, look, it doesn't. If I'm just if I'm just putting these pieces together, something doesn't smell right. Okay, something doesn't smell right here. You've mm-hmm. got your name. You've got millions of dollars. You are friendly with this interpreter. Like before the news broke, before the news broke, and this is one of these, and it's funny how these stories are connected because ESPN let the Dodgers know they're working on a story. So before they told them they were working on a story, Shohei's story with his interpreter was a little different. It was, hey, I helped him, you know, I helped him out. Now, when the story is coming out, it's, he got stolen. Uh, he's the victim of a right. massive theft. theft. Yeah. Theft. Yeah. All right. All right. And, and so, where's the interpreter? So the interpreter is getting this money because he's stealing it from you. But that wasn't the story. We knew the amount of money, 24 hours earlier, 12 hours earlier, and now the story changes. The story. It, it's. Something is not quite right here, and I don't know if it's Otani yeah. uh, as the problem. If he's if he's a problem, he's protecting someone, or if he's protecting himself. Yeah. I don't want any of it to be true because I'm shallow, and I love watching the guy play. And if 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 this That's comes fair. back to him, if That's this comes fair. back to him, he's It'll not going to be playing for a while. He's not going to be playing well, for see, a while. That's Rob why Manfred is going to have to do something. No, well. I actually do have a solution for Rob Manford, but I'll get to it in a second. But they're not going to Pete Rose this dude. Like, let's say worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. And, I, and, and unless, unless there's evidence to the contrary, I'm going to assume that Shohei Otani is not betting on baseball or uh, betting illegally in the state of California. Because let me make sure I get this little factoid here right. To whom it may concern. Um, Sports gambling is illegal in California, although 38 states, I want to get that number right, 38 states and the District of Columbia allow some form of it. But so it's illegal in California. Obviously, betting on baseball is strictly prohibited. As a matter of fact, Major League Baseball's gambling policy posted in every clubhouse. Legally or not, it is punishable with a one-year ban from the sport, whereas the penalty for betting on other sports illegally is at the commissioner's discretion. Speaking of commissioner's discretion, this internal investigation by Major League Baseball ain't worth the paper it's printed on. This is baseball investigating itself. It's not investigating Shohei Otani. It's investigating in- itself. And it was a one in the same. Because talk, speaking of the best interest of baseball, it is certainly because of the many people who you speak for right now, Michael Holly, not in the best interest of baseball for its one of its biggest stars, if, if not its biggest star. You said the best player in your lifetime, Barry, bon- Barry Bonds yeah. has just entered the chat, uh, but nobody's done what this guy has done at the mound and at I the plate. No, I no, for sure. With Barry Bonds Barry. never pitched. Barry Bonds never That's pitched. Right. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, it is not in the best interest of baseball for Shohei Otani uh, to be suspended or banned uh, for gambling, which is why I don't expect 
Major League Baseball to find anything that it does not want to find. Um, however, this is this the theme of this is CYA. If if baseball wanted to cover his ass, they should still discipline him. A little slap on the wrist just for even being connected to illegal gambling. That way What's they could the say, I what kind of slap are we talking about? I don't know. I don't know. Dozen games, big fine. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is. Ooh. But nothing that's going to hurt too much. Nothing that's going to hurt too much. How about the much. fine? Too, too we'll much. take the fine, please. You know, so, yeah, you know, whatever. Something, something that at least shows that we're taking this seriously. So that nobody can accuse them or, or, or pull them into a cover-up. Because when the story has already changed once or twice, I asked you what you want to hear from Shohei Otani today, what you needed to hear. I don't think it matters what he says through his interpreter. Why not? Because because they've already changed the story and they've taken the last few days. This is the cynic in me talking to get the story straight and I don't blame him. It's like the team got together. The crisis team got together and said, hold on, dog. Do, wait a minute. Do not acknowledge, do not admit that you wired money, even if it's on your boy's behalf, to somebody running an illegal gambling operation. Like, th- what are you thinking? Like, absolutely not. Okay? So it's like, whatever story they come up with, or whatever answers, he, I'd, I'd be surprised if he answered most questions. I think he'll elect not to comment uh, in most cases. I, maybe it might not even take questions. Okay, um, I don't know that it matters because I don't know that anything can be believed when the story has already changed this quickly from he was he was looking out for a friend to his friend stole from him to it be your own people. Like that's what he basically gonna get up there and say it be your own people, you know. So I don't know that it matters a because there's no credibility involved here, understandably so, and b because Major League Baseball isn't gonna find anything he doesn't want to find. Now the feds. That's another matter altogether. Well, Journalism and journalistic organizations is another matter altogether, which is why I propose that solution for Rob Manfred. Because if it if come to find out, y'all swept some stuff under the rug and they were complicit in any hypothetical cover up. The Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the IRS, <laughs> the Congress, they, they are not inclined to protect the best interest of baseball. So no, I, I, I don't know where this is going, but I got a bigger picture comment after you go. I got a bigger picture comment. Go ahead. Okay, I, I just want to say this, and this is not a bigger picture comment. It's just as this is a comment about getting the story right, and it, the irony is, it's Shohei's interpreter, his interpreter, yeah, who is yeah. being questioned and who has already been dismissed. So that's the first casualty. His interpreter goes away, and I bring that up. Yeah. The interpreter is important. Because uh, earlier this year, and there's one of my colleagues at, uh, at NBC Boston, who used to be a, the interpreter for the Dodgers for, for Spanish speaking players. And mm. uh, he heard earlier this, uh, this offseason, uh, Red Sox player Rafael Devers went off in Spanish on the Red Sox. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the interpreter. Now, I took several years of Spanish in high school and in college, uh, but my conversational Spanish is a little rusty. But I'm listening to him. I'm listening to Devers in Spanish. I'm like, ooh. Then I hear the interpreter. I said, oh, that was soft. That ain't what he said. Something's not, <laughs> right. something's not right. right. No, 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 no. I said, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. He didn't, yeah. he didn't say, right. no, that's a little angrier than the interpreter interpreted. Mm-hmm. He said, he, he so my colleague says, oh, my colleague says, oh, no, 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 man. Let me tell you, that was harsh. That was harsh. Mm-hmm. The interpreter is playing games there. The interpreter mm-hmm. did not tell people what he, this is what he really said, and he repeated it, and he's angry. He didn't, the interpreter didn't get the anger and the nuance and all that stuff. So if we're listening today, you said it doesn't matter what Shohei Otani says. Maybe you're right, but if. It doesn't if, matter if what if I I'm believe. The, it matters yeah, what I can prove. Right. If I'm the Washington Post or the New York Times or the LA Times, I will damn sure have my own interpreter there because Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. will happen too. Of course it will happen. There's going to be some filtering process that goes through here 
and maybe Otani will say it one way and the interpreter will just kind of fix it and tweak it so it's more digestible yeah, for people yeah, like me who kind of want to hear certain it, things. I don't I don't think he can do that because it could be too many. I, I hear you. I, I, I think the organization, the news organization is going to be covering this are way ahead of it. And also it's just, yeah, w I would love to know what the, com the context of the, of the Devers situation. Was it like in a room? It, was it among a, gr a group of print reporters? Because it's like they're just too, they're going to be too many Every eyes and ears on what Shohei Otani has to say for that interpreter to think he can get away with. Hey, man, you ain't the only person that speaks yeah. Japanese in this room. You know, he, he's, yeah, he's not going to be he's not going to be able to get away with sanitizing or, 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 or misrepresenting right. what Shohei Otani says. It was it was uh, it was all media there. But let's let's face it. The Dodgers are going to win about 75 more games this year than the Boston Red Sox will. Uh, <laughs> right. And, and they LA, are, yeah, yeah. they are star studded. It's LA. They've got people yeah. there. They've got people yeah. that they've got people. They got North American journalists. They got journalists from all over the world who that, cover that cover, time. That cover just, this guy already. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the larger picture to me though, <clears throat> it's just crazy how art imitates life and sometimes, you know, just way ahead. I mean, you know, one of my one of my favorite uh, underrated movies is The Last Boy Scout. Um, yeah, because it's like, right, because that's what we are. That's what, that's the time. That's what the times we're living in right now. Like, the, the thing that jumped out to me more than anything is that California of all places, sports gambling is illegal. It's like, and you know, sports gambling at this point being illegal feels like we being illegal back in the day. And I like, was like, yeah. wait, that really, like, like we've come such a long way societally, societally for a sports gambling to be illegal anywhere, starting with a place like California. And I guess it's, I'm like, we talked about what Kim Mulkey, you know, was done in dark, you know, allegedly comes to light um, or what's allegedly done in dark comes to light. Um, whether or not Shohei Otani was privy to his interpreter's activities, whether or not he participated in any illegal gambling, whether or not he was covering for a friend, was stolen from, whether or not this leads to, to anything in terms of discipline or punishment or banishment even, like somewhere right now, there's a player or a player's family member or a friend of a player or an associate or colleague of a player or a coach, or a coach's family member, or a friend of that coach, or a colleague of that coach, or an executive, or a media member, or an official, a referee, an umpire, a me I mean, need I go on? Like, need I go on? I called you Mr. Mr. My Bet Your Money. Gambling is so synonymous with sports and pervasive in sports yeah. right now. That like, it is the strangest of bedfellows. It's like it went from being so taboo to Vegas being the sports capital of the country. It went from there'll never be a team in Vegas to Vegas teams winning championships. They went from we'll never embrace gambling to the official gambling sponsor of the NFL. You know, a gambling partner of the NFL. It's like to a Super Bowl, to a Super Bowl being held in Vegas after the commissioner said just a few years ago. I don't know right. how we could reconcile this. This would bring up lots of questions. My, about point, credibility. my point is this is going on right now, right now. And it's just a matter of whether or not you get busted, whether it's Calvin Ridley or Shohei Otani and everybody in between in terms of notoriety and star power. It's just a matter of whether or not it gets bu people get busted because there's too much money being made. There's too much money to be made and there's too much inside information available to whether, like, yo, man, Calvin Ridley's biggest mistake was having an account under his own name. Like, these do, these people that are connected, they know too much, and it's, it's, it's no different than college athletes and NIL money and, 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 partner, and, and, and partnership money and the money that, that, that the college football playoff is making or March Madness is making, and they want their piece of the pie. It's no different. Like, how are so many people making gambling money including the leagues themselves, the conferences themselves, the organizations themselves, and not the players or their loved ones. What was it, J.B. Bickerstaff the other day uh, was talking about, yeah, like, right. he has fans, so, 
yeah. that, that, that make remarks to him about about spreads. He has people about that have left family. messages for him talking about his about family his that they know it. Like this is this is this is so much deeper than Nino Brown. This is so much bigger than Nino Brown <laughs> and so much deeper <laughs> than Shohei Otani. It's like Shohei Otani is just like, okay, like I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, there are people sweeping around their own front door right now in Major League Baseball. Hell, probably on the Dodgers right now, that if they aren't gambling themselves on other sports, if not baseball, they know somebody, or at least know somebody who knows somebody who's gambling based off the information they gave them or gambling yeah. on their behalf. This is so pervasive. We just don't know yeah, it. It's yet. pervasive, but I have to say, though, but I have to say that there is a, even, and I agree with, 98% of, of your points, 99% of your points, but then it, it, am I naive to still hold on to that 1% to hold on to that sacred ground where we ask you not to gamble on your own sport. So I, I agree. I understand why baseball says you cannot gamble on baseball. You can't gamble. No, on I understand your own team. why you can't gamble. I understand on why the other team. I just, but credibility it's just too much wise, temptation. It's just too yeah, much temptation, but, but you, credibility. You know, Gambling, gambling on, on your, your own, own team sport, is one though. thing. Your your own team or your own sport. Your own team or your own sport. Both of them. Both of them. I, bad. Listen, I, I think it's I, bad. If, I think it's bad business. Now, no, I agree it, with you. It's, but, it's, can, but can the players realistically to, be expected to not do the latter? The own team part, because that's like, oh, you you out here throwing games. You know, you you point shaving. That's one thing. Your own sport. Good luck. Good luck. I mean, like, you can on, put that rule on the clubhouse wall. You could no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying yeah. it's unrealistic. You could put that rule on a clubhouse wall, but good luck. Hey, good luck. Hey, listen, or even if, if you, you don't personally do it, somebody could do it and you have a proxy. It's just it's just too much of this shit going on. It's at your fingertips. You don't have to go to a bookmaker nowadays to do it. It's at your right, fingertips. You, you don't have to go to but a wait, to like, a, but you, got you, know, you don't have to go to a, a, a casino to do it. It's at your fingertips. It's hey, too Mike, easy. It's Mike, too tempting. Mike, I'm I'm giving you I'm giving you this entire garden. Why must you eat from that tree? <laughs> I mean, like everything else, everything else is available to you. Why that one? Really? You got basketball. If you're a baseball player, you got basketball, you got football, you got college basketball. Now, I we know saw major the NFL baseball. Recently. This is where, we, this is where I disagree. How many guys got popped in the offseason for gambling in the NFL? On, yeah, on, this is where gambling I disagree with. On, but hold on, Mike. But gambling on wasn't, wasn't the big issue was that they were just gambling on the team premises. You can gamble away, yeah. but you can't gamble on the hotel on the road. You can't gamble here on other sports. It's like this is see this, this is a lot see, of this is unenforceable in many ways. Yeah. See, that's why I, I hate that part of from, from all the sports. If baseball says, hey, don't gamble on baseball, whether it's your own team or it's your opponent, we don't like it and it's forbidden. Okay, I got no problem with it. But hey, you're telling me as a baseball player, I can't gamble on the NBA. I can't gamble on the NCAA tournament. Oh, I can't gamble on the NCAA tournament, even though uh, in your offices, everybody's gambling. Everybody threw a little something in, depending on how much money is in that office. Everybody, somebody threw in five, somebody threw in 50, somebody threw in 100. Somebody was well, upset well, yeah. last night. Well, just, Texas well, just to be clear, lost to Houston. Just to be clear. I mean, come on. I don't, I don't. I don't think the policy is you can't bet on other sports. It's betting on other it's, sports illegally. Illegally. Well, no, 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 no. Hey, look, uh, you you mentioned I think it was Jamison Williams who was in the team facility. Yeah, it was not illegal. Right. It was gambling. No, no, no I'm talking about, I'm talking about in terms illegal? of baseball. No, no, I'm talking in terms okay. of baseball. You were saying baseball is saying you can't argue. I mean, you can't uh, bet on other sports. I, I know think it's the illegal aspect of it is what I'm talking about. You can, obviously and can't I know bet on football, baseball. I know football. They you cannot bet on other sports. Other sports on the team premises, I believe, yeah. is the policy. I believe, yeah. That's crazy. Right. I think that's. I mean, that that's crazy yeah. when we're talking about all the things. The the number came out, and I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll get to it. Uh, sorry, but I just thought of it uh, here. The number came out uh, a few weeks ago about how much gambling has contributed to this whole ecosystem that we're in and it's tremendous. It's a tremendous yeah. amount of revenue for those <laughs> who, are, you. who are who Thank are associated you. with gambling like you. the NFL. 
like the NBA. But they can't take. But they can't take part in it. Major League Baseball. I mean, like all of them are associated with it. And yet, when their players kind of straddle that line, they act like well. And I think this is what we got. It. This is a real issue. They act like it's 1990. It's not. So yeah. we we got to adjust. We got to catch up. The the rules are in place. The rules have not changed, although the world has. So we're, there we're, is no we're using, we're, we're applying, you know, 30 and 35 year old rules to 2024 and it just doesn't match up. There's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. This, this rabbit hole goes deeper than we know. Um, yeah, I, it just, any cliche you could think of, like, the tip of the iceberg, I, <laughs> yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see what he says or what he says through his interpreter, but it's, I don't know what to believe. I will choose to believe, like you, that he is innocent and that Shohei Otani will not be compromised it's from blessing us with his brilliance. It's not it got, it wasn't Shohei. <laughs> hey, I'm speaking of which, listen, you, you, you're, the, you're the gambler. You know I'm a fantasy football nut. That's gambling. Speaking of fantasy football, our Dynasty League what time draft has, re, it has resumed. 11 o'clock. Okay. Our Dynasty League draft has resumed. Here we go. Our, our, our slow draft has resumed. Round, round, what round we in? Round 15? 14, 14 15? 15 what round, round we in? 14. I think we're round round 14 out of oh, 20. So only 14? Separating the men from the board. Just some good players out there, Mike. Some good players on the board. Where do you predict? Shador and Travis going in the draft. Top four. Mm. That's pretty beautiful. Anywhere from one through four. One of them is going to be one. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. One of them is going to be speaking into existence. And the, the, the latter one would not go behind four. Mm. Now, all this is subjective because I know where I want, kind of want them to go. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget shallow, okay? Mm -hmm. But I know where I want them to go. So there's certain cities that ain't, ain't gonna happen. It's gonna okay, be a you want point? It's gonna be a, it's not a, I'm sorry, it's gonna be an Eli. See, it's, it was certain cities that fit. Yeah. Atlanta fit. Yeah. And that's what I want for my kids, all of them. I want the right fit. What is it about Atlanta? Uh, first of all, it's the ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Because that's the first time I ever saw black people in positions of authority. Deion Sanders claiming authority over the establishment. Um, I'm gonna cost so much they're gonna have to put me on layaway. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like we, we, we will never, that will never get old. That will never ever get old. This, this is this this man has been here before. This ain't his first rodeo. It's not the first time as he kind of you know calls his shot. Uh, or, or, or fires a warning shot across the bow of the NFL um, and, and the draft infrastructure that, hey, um, you know, my kids aren't about, about to go with the program. Um, but it's not the first time. Uh, for you youngins out there, uh, John Elway didn't want to be drafted by the Baltimore Colts. Uh, that's how he ended up with the Broncos. Bo Jackson didn't want to be drafted by the Bucks. That's how he played baseball and ended up with the Raiders. Uh, and as Dion mentioned, Eli Manning wasn't going to go to the Chargers. And he ended up getting traded to the Giants. So uh, Deion is saying it's Shadur Sanders. First he said he didn't want Shadur playing in the cold, but now he's saying Shadur and um, Travis Hunter that certain teams they just won't go to. And I just want to say, Michael, I think it's possible, just as we are fond of saying that more than one thing can be true, I think yeah. it's possible for me to be the biggest draft nerd on the planet, so much so that while many others may say that this time of year, March Madness, the NCAA tournament, is the greatest sporting event uh, in Americana. I believe that the NFL draft is the best sporting event on the sports calendar. And frankly, I think it's growth over the last few years has supported that. The fact that it's now a traveling circus, um, the fact that, that the television coverage that it gets, I think it supported that thesis. Um, because it's the only event where everybody wins. Hope springs say, eternal. Hope. Everybody can participate. Everybody can participate. 
Um, it is it's the most inclusive hope, event that any any, wish, any league has. We have high hopes. Hope. Um, <laughs> But I can be the biggest fan of the draft and be obsessed with the draft and obsessed with the team building process, obsessed with all the, the, the dealings and the trades and the scouting reports and the, the rumors and the, and the innuendo and everything and still very much be here for chaos. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset yeah. the established order. <laughs> and what you have is chaos. And I'm an agent of chaos. I am so for the drama. All this does is, is, is contribute, frankly, to the hype machine around the draft is players, the modern player, the modern NIL player taking agency, whereas it used to be the agents, now they're taking agency over where they go. Because Michael, again, I love the draft. I love the process, but the principle is never something that I've been comfortable with. Because, and we've been talking about this a lot, especially with reflected on the 2021 quarterback class. How many times have you heard me qualify a player's reputation uh, or legacy by describing the circumstances in which they were drafted into through no choice or fault of their own? Right. Right. So I love the players who not only have the power, but know they have the power and are willing to wield that power to say, yeah, I'm not going to your dysfunctional organization letting you ruin my career right out of the gate. I, you're not going to Justin Fields me. Okay. No, I, hell no. Like, because it, it's, uh, we already have a rookie wage scale. We already are coming in on fixed income. Now you're telling me where I got to live and work if they have the power to do it. If they're not one of these kids and, and most of the kids are like, hey, I just want to live the dream. I just want to be. I never imagined making this much money. I never imagined playing a kid's game. Most of them are sincere when they say, I don't care where I go. I just want to play in the league on Sundays or Mondays or Thursdays or Saturdays, as the case may be. Um, but for kids like Shadua Sanders or Travis Hunter, backed by a guy like Deion Sanders. Oh, yeah, they, they could pull it off. And I don't think yeah. the, the NFL is going to be in a yeah. listen, pro, provided that both these dudes can actually ball that they could actually play. Okay, well, which I believe I believe right. they can at the next level. I believe they can. So assuming that they're as good as we think they are, I believe that the NFL and teams that are interested are going to be far more likely to acquiesce to their demands than they are going to be to what they might have done once upon a time, which is trying to make an example out of them. Because you and I talked about it, even though Caleb Williams hasn't pulled this card and look at Chicago, maybe because Chicago is getting their shit together and making sure that Caleb Williams likes the situation that he's going into. But Caleb Williams could have pulled this card. He did not. But he did thumb his nose at the establishment. And he wasn't the only one. The LSU kids didn't get Marvin measured Harrison at the combine. Jr. Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. Whether it's participation in the combine, or whether it's medical information. We had a long conversation about that the other day. This, these, these new dudes don't roll, don't roll like that. They're not just happy to be here. And given what Deion Sanders has not only done for Colorado, but done for, you know, his kids, as he calls them, both biologically and adopted, as, it, as the case may be, like, I would not be surprised if they were actually able to bend the NFL and the draft establishment to his and their will more than they are, they, they, they would have to fall in line come the 2025 draft. My tiny point, tiny, tiny nitpick. Point of order, nits, point right? of order. Tiny, Go ahead, tiny allow, one allow me to, to retort. The, Go ahead and retort. Yeah, before I get to the, before I get to the big one, the bigger one. Dion, if you're going to have the first pick in the draft and the fourth pick in the draft, you're going to have to win some more games than you did this year. You're going to have to hold oh, on to fair. a 29 <laughs> first to a 29 in other words, point halftime lead. In other words, Stanford. first thing is first. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, I got you. Right. Yeah, I got you. Right. Yeah. You will have to win some then more games. Then, like, then you, know, you can exact some grand plan. <laughs> you're talking like, you're talking I, all this, I, like, I right you. now, I got you. y'all didn't make a bowl. Yeah, they, right. they didn't make a bowl this year. And so that's a good catch. it was the that's hype. A good catch by you. Yeah, right. The hype for Colorado 
didn't really match the performance of Colorado down the stretch. They were they were our team. We were watching that team in September. They were hot thing in September. And then and then it started getting cold and so did they. They just kind of disappeared. So that you know, we'll see. We'll see if you have the first pick in the draft and the fourth pick in the draft. If you do, I, I like to see you make a bowl. But the other thing is, Mike, you said you're an agent of chaos. Good. Me too. I love the draft as much as you do. We talk about it all the time. It's one of the things that uh, one of the things, one of our shared passions, the draft and team building and all that good stuff. But you said I like a kid who thinks that way or a kid who brings it about. Not necessarily their parents. Like Shadur Sanders is 22 years old, man. Does he feel this way? I would like him to to state his own case. I don't want to hear Dion saying, I want what's best for my kids. On one hand, as a parent, I applaud it. As a father, I, I, I applaud the investment and the interest and the advice. But this is a grown man now. And if he's going to be the first pick in the draft, let him go his own way. Maybe you don't think it. Don't maybe you think, think it lands. Don't you think they've had that conversation? Well, are you speaking from know. Shadur's standpoint? Really or are you speaking know. from a, a team evaluating standpoint? I. Because Dion's going to be part of the picture. Well, real quick, not only I, is Dion going to be part of the picture, and, and it's similar to what we talked about with Caleb Williams. He's going to be part of the picture, but if, if you're a savvy owner, you're kind of drafting Shador because of the Dion of it all, to some extent. Not, 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 not you're drafting the player first. You're drafting the player yeah, first. But, only but in, there's a side yeah. benefit to the Dion of it all. You talked about the hype. Like, you want the Dion, you know, bonus coming with Shadur and Travis but Hunter, do you is, not? If I would. Kind of, kind of, but I'm, I'm just thinking about the young man. Okay, there, there are <laughs> benefits to being I was very Deion paternalistic Sanders's, of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the young, young man. man. <laughs> the, the man. Um, but there are some benefits to being, to having that last name. For no, sure. Be, Deion Sanders. Hey, Brendan Rice is going to be in the draft. Jerry Rice is something. Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay, Bronny James. There are benefits to having a famous parent. And there are things that are afforded to you that may not be afforded to other people. But then when you want to make your mark as an individual, it's hard to get out of that that shadow that, that it's at times. I'm sure it's overbearing. Can you imagine Deion Sanders who made all of that, who made those great comments before being drafted by the Atlanta Falcons and then going to the Georgia Dome and saying, I built this house and all the things that Dion did with Atlanta. And now Shador, you want him to play for the Falcons, the same team that you played for because it's a place where you saw uh, black excellence for the first time or in, in, a, in authority. I think it'd be a great I don't story, know, man. Like, I think it'd be a great story. I don't, know. I don't like it. And I, I don't I, like I, it. I, I want, think it'd be a I think it'd be a great Shador, story. I think the kid. I think the kid's built that, for it. He's. I, I, I'm, I'm going to assume they've had this conversation. How many people have built for while. that? How many people? I'm going to assume that. I mean, how many kids? How many Hall of Fame players have a kid that could possibly be uh, a top five pick? Look, Arch, Archie Manning maybe didn't say it as colorfully as Dion does, but Archie Manning very much spoke for Eli Manning. You know, like he Oliver did. Luck spoke for Andrew Luck. Jack Elway spoke for John Elway. You know, like plenty of parents have been out front and taken taken the heat off of their kid in some they respect. Have, but but also, you know what? I gotta say, I gotta mm -hmm. say, you know, if I look at if I look at the the, the big picture in retrospect, uh, if John Elway going to the Colts would that have worked out for John Elway the same way it did with the Broncos? Probably. Denver, Indianapolis. Well, well, you, well you know, you know, it gets forgotten is how much he struggled would've. early in his Broncos career. Early in his Broncos career, yeah. he was not good, and it was very. He had he some rocky times early on. Yeah. And you know, he, and Eli, it took him what, uh, you know, four years, four years after being drafted uh, by the Giants uh, to win a championship, and he's a legend there with two championships and some surrounded by some mediocrity. Quite frankly, uh, could he have done that somewhere else? Probably. I don't know. I mean. I just feel like I like I like parental involvement, but I, I think the point that we're all trying to get to is to turn our sons and daughters into decision makers who value wise sure. counsel. But I don't okay. want you speaking for me when I'm 22 years uh, old. Sorry, 
I wouldn't okay. want it. What? But I don't know. Maybe Why? They want and, it. I, and I and I and I and I hope he's authorized to say that. I, I think whether it would have worked out or not in those other cases, I, respectfully, I think is beside the point. But I, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Right. But yeah, but it, but it, but it's interesting. This is an interesting conversation because you know I talked to you last week about the college process, the application, admittance, acceptance, you know, deferment, wait list, what, uh, the whole the whole process. I'm going through with my oldest. It's so funny because Sarah is of the school of thought where it's like, we paying for this, so this is where you're going. <laughs> full, That's full stop. Ain't, ain't no conversation. But, 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 but hold on. I'm, but I might I'm, agree I'm with getting that. Where you, but I'm right. But I'm getting, I'm getting where you. But I'm getting where you're going 18. though. At 17, but I'm, 18, I'm, I think so. No, but but I'm more of the. See, I'm more progressive, aka soft. I'm more okay, of the. There we go. I was gonna say don't call that progressive. I'm more of the. I want. I want her to buy in, and I want us to be on the same page. I want this to be a collective decision. You know what I mean? I, I want it to. I want her to see it the same way and think the, think the same way. Because um, I want her to be happy, and that's the thing. But we have we have an, a, a, a connected conversation around these discussions in our household about, frankly, how spoiled my children are. And I've never made apologies for that. I've never made apologies for that. Because what do we do it for? What do you do it for, Michael? What have I been doing it for, but for to give our children the opportunities that maybe we didn't have, or give them those opportunities and more, right? right. Like, we, we work, right. now, and then now, now there's a balance. You don't want to spoil your children to the point where they have a warped view of reality and they don't have proper perspective or their worldview is jacked up, right? Or they or don't, don't, they have don't that, appreciate it. That beautiful thing called gratitude. Or, yeah, gratitude or, or work ethic. Or work or ethic. Or humility and work ethic, right. Right. But, like, the goal is to give them better. So if I'm Deion Sanders, Everything I went through and everything I learned, everything I did, all the mistakes I may have made, all of it, in my mind, if I'm Deion Sanders, was for you, Shadora Sanders, was for you, Travis Hunter. It's like, I'm speaking for you because daddy knows best. Father knows best. That was a pretty good TV show back in the day. Father knows best. Mm, it's like, mm. and in this instance, Sorry, let me be the one. Let Before me be time. the one. Let me be the one going on million dollars worth of game saying this. You ain't got to say it. You ain't got to say it. I'll say it for you. I could I can take it. I could take it. Let me do it. Let, I got I got you on this. We'll talk behind closed doors. But trust me, son, I, I've, I've talked to people. I know people. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. I, I know what the, I, I know. I know what it takes to succeed in this league. I know what it looks like in this league. I know how to win at the highest levels. And there's no pressure on you, son, if you go to Atlanta. Yeah, there's no pressure on you. There'd be pressure on you if you play cornerback and you wore number 21 in Atlanta. But you play quarterback. You're a different kid. You're your own kid. And you've been dealing with the pressure of being my son your whole life. This ain't, this ain't new to you. You ain't new to this. You're true to this. He'd probably say something like that. That's what Dion would probably say. You know, so it's he like, would, he would say that. I, 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 if, if you're Dion, your whole goal is to use the power, the influence, the notoriety that you have built to make a better path for your son. To a that's, degree. that's one of the benefits you're talking about. To a degree. I don't, I don't think it degree. robs him of his. I don't think it robs him of his own adult agency or what? adult or decision making oh, process. Sure, it could. First it of all, could, you're, you're also operating from a place that they don't agree on this. You're operating okay, from a place and, and, of. And I don't know. And I don't know. That's why I said I would like to hear. I would like to hear it from him. I would like to hear from him. I don't want him to. I don't want that. I don't want the. I don't want your protection anymore. Don't you tell. Don't you tell your children you got plenty of time to be an adult. I know I do. You got plenty of time to play. But he's pay an your adult. But he is an adult. And, he's 22. And, you're, you're, I'm, or whatever he is, I'm sure he will speak for himself in due time. He will not. Dion will be, not be up there. At least I don't think he will. Will not be, be up there at the post game podium. A 23 year old quarterback. He'll be 23. He will not. But Dion won't be up. Dion will not be up there answering questions after Shadur Sanders throws four interceptions. I assume he will not be the one at the press conference. Yeah. In, the, in the meantime, let it's okay. It's, it's perfectly okay for a father to help his son navigate this process. 
Especially of course, that it's okay no, to na son. navigate. We're not and talking about navigating. Yeah, what you what you described is not a navigation. What you described is yeah, it's navigation, and I'm at the helm, and you just sit by here as my co-pilot as I get you to the right place, and then I'll let you take over. That's not na like he's not navigating. He's directing. He's he's steering. Okay. He's putting it. He's putting his son in a certain destination he called, he based a, on his he's a helicopter based parent? on his experience. And, and you know what? And, and we, I think we've had this conversation before. It's a there's a balance of your experience, the, the, giving them the insight from your experiences, but not so much that you're putting your own crap. That, you know, sure, that's into your the heads yeah. 100%, of your children. Hundred percent. Yes. Yes. So yes, that's true. Hey, what what Dion what Dion experienced with Atlanta and what he saw with Atlanta. Is probably different than what Shadur will experience with Atlanta or Chicago or Cleveland or Cincinnati or any other any other city in this country. He's of a different generation, and because of the privileges that he's had, he has seen more earlier and has see, has has seen more of a more of an eclectic view of the country than his father did because of his father's resources. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think I just like to hear it. I like to hear it from him, and okay. Uh, and I don't know if he's going to be the number it. one pick anyway. Number one. I don't mind it. I, no, I asked Lawson. It's so fun. It's so presumptuous. Oh, he's going to be number one. Very. And, and evaluators Very. are sitting there, and be like, "Okay, <laughs> do I not take this guy? Do I not take this guy in the third round?" Right. There's a, the there's a law. There's a law. Is, is your, that's, that's the presumptuous. Is is, the, is definitely the operative word. Okay. Let's pivot to this year's draft. Because I'm fascinated to talk about like what with, with somebody, what somebody says and, and how much credibility they have. Um, Jim Harbaugh came out today and he said, he doubled down, he said this before, that J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in this year's class. Uh, oh, wow. the, bias is, the bias is obvious. We say, oh, wow, like, that was, that was, was that sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just surprised. Sorry. I'm just, yeah. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Well, is it a lot because it's coming from Jim Harbaugh, his old coach in Michigan, or is it a lot because it's ridiculous? Because I'm just like, because I, 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 well, I, I go back and forth. Okay, okay. <laughs> both things can be true. I go back and forth because, all right, like, so the bias. We don't even need to address the bias because, of course, that's what Jim Harbaugh would say. But I'm fascinated by this draft process rise of J.J. McCarthy. Because on the one hand, if I'm an evaluator, it would scare the shit out of me that I'm projecting that he will do things that he either didn't or didn't have to do at Michigan. Okay? He had a running game. He had a defense. He had everything perfect. And as you know, in the NFL, rarely is everything perfect. Everything was perfect around him to the point where his numbers, now his advanced analytics paint a very rosy picture of J.J. McCarthy's potential, but his actual numbers pale in comparison to people who were asked to do more. Juxtapose that yeah. with Caleb Williams, whose defense was atrocious, right? Um, on the other hand, I'm all, often fond of saying when it comes to prospects that we, we often talk too much about what a guy can't do when really what we're right. saying is what he hasn't done or what we haven't seen right. him do yet, which is why it's such an inexact science because this is a projection. And the things I read and hear about J.J. McCarthy, especially if he's dropped in a place like, oh, I don't know, Minnesota, they kind of excite me, Mr. Buckeye. They kind of excite me, Mr. O.H.I.O. So, so it's, it's risky yeah. because you, you, can't, you can't point to 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns and four interceptions. And, but you can say, wait a second, he's got these tools. He's toolsy. He's toolsy. He's got these traits. He's got the makeup of what we look for in a quarterback. And this I mean, like, again, this he could be a great. All the hard He could be wait, all the hard He could be a there. great. He could you be know, a great system quarterback, Michael. He could be a great system quarterback. <laughs> you know, like you know, but the eye black. But trade up for a system quarterback. Okay, the eye black, and then you want to talk about cliches that come with that? You know, there's there's, there's some intangibles. The, the kid's just a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner. He's got a big heart. He's playing you know, in the biggest moments. The big stage. 
He's not afraid yeah, of the big stage. Gonna, He's afraid of the big house. He's not afraid of the big stage. I'm going to say this about the draft process. And we, we, well, we love it. We love it. But I'd say from anywhere from March until draft day, that day three of the draft, from March until day three of the draft, every evaluator has low character. Every evaluator lies. Every evaluator has no integrity. Every evaluator has next level, may, whether they play chess or not. There, this is 3D advanced, advanced chess, where they will take on. They could beat anybody. They could beat Bobby Fischer. They could beat Deep Blue. Any kind of computer, whatever it is, they just lie. They lie, and they just throw all kinds of stuff out there, and it's extremely entertaining. It's not true. But it's entertaining, and so just take it for what it's worth. And if you really want, if you really want to enjoy yourself, just pick your player, pick your favorite player, whoever it is, your favorite great player, your favorite Hall of Famer, and see if you can find uh, their draft report online. You probably can, and just read what it says about them. Go ahead and read Patrick. I did it the other day. I read Patrick Mahomes' the other day. It was oh great. yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. You know, listen, his arm, yeah, big time arm, but his arm's gonna get him into trouble and. You know, he struggles in certain areas and, uh, you know, certain things he can't do. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. That's Patrick Mahomes. Hilarious and That's what, Josh, Josh Allen. Hey, you know, this is disappointing. Only completed in college, you know, in the 50, 50% 50 completion percentage at Wyoming. Oh, that's just not good. And, you know, he's got a, he's got a big arm, but, you know, certain things he just doesn't understand, you know, playing the position. They're like, okay. All right, and so what people can do goes too far. What people can't do goes too far. I will tell sure. you this: JJ McCarthy's not the best quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is he? Okay, and, fine. Where and, is he? And he knows. That's not a bold statement, but where is he? But, but where is? Does he belong in the conversation of like top four, yeah. like Minnesota or New York, training well, up to get him? Conversation? Yeah, oh yeah. Is he, okay. Is he, is he legit top that fi- good? Top fifteen, sure. Yep. Because all these guys, most of the guys no, in four, the top four, top five, like trading up to get him to four or well, five. Need, Hell, yeah, I mean, look, here's one thing. Harbaugh, because you, you know Harbaugh, you know Harbaugh's full of shit, okay? So right. it's like, hey, hey, guys, I know you guys are talking about going up to four to get the Cardinals pick to trade for a quarterback. But if you want to come up, we don't need a quarterback. So I can tell you objectively and unbiased, J.D. McCarthy is the guy you want. You really want to come up to five. We open for business at five. Exactly you can come up to five and get J.J. McCarthy. He's the best quarterback you. in the draft at the fifth pick. What a bargain. Exactly. For the price of exactly. only your next two first round picks. <laughs> then, then they come up. And he's in the draft room later, just chilling with the scouts. She's like, man, can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe they drive to J.J. McCarthy? <laughs> don't they watch film? They don't you watch ever seen that, uh, You ever seen that uh, that Breakfast Club clip where they just crack it up laughing like just fall over the place? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah no, that's absolutely. Um, yeah, this is that's that's perfect gamesmanship on the part of uh, But good for him. Harbaugh. Good for him. And look, if you're desperate, if you're desperate enough, Yes, you don't have a quarterback. He's a top five quarterback for you if you don't have one. No, but what it is, one, you just got you, so much time. You'll overpay. You got so much time. If you look at if you if you in the club and you lonely, you look at somebody long enough, they start to look good, especially when the lights start to come on, or and it starts right? to get late. And you get if you look at them long enough, you can convince yourself, like okay, you know. But like, okay. I think they got so much time. It works both ways. Like if you look at somebody long enough, you're gonna find this to pick. And if you look at somebody long enough, you're like, you know what? I could see spending the rest of my life with this person. Or at least tonight. You know, it's just it, it happens that way sometimes. <laughs> the rest um, of my life or tonight. So that's the making uh, of an R and B song right there. You said you that sounded like some Bobby Womack shit. You said and nobody can even leave this time of year. Uh Gerard is that, Mayo, was that is that what? Is that uh is that the if Bobby you think Womack you're lonely song? Now? Is that it? No, you think you know you think, you think if you think you're lonely now, wait until tonight. Yeah. Girl. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was I about to say? Oh, um, all right, but let's move up to two and three though. Because both Dan Quinn and Gerard Mayo 
has some interesting things to say about their plans at quarterback at the second and third pick, respectively, Commanders and Patriots. Quinn was like, yeah, you know, get us some, say there's something going to take a quarterback, but it's up to Adam Peters where we take the quarterback. Gerard Mayo was like, yeah, quarterback's a priority. Definitely a priority for us. Um, but we're open for anything. I want to hone in on the Patriots, your neck of the woods, your backyard, hone in on the Patriots. And just philosophically, I wonder whether you think um, it makes more sense for the Patriots. We talked about the Bears nesting. Well, so this is this. I'm, I'm going to ask you a double barrel question. We'll break okay, the double barrel. So Watsky says you shouldn't do this. So I'm going to write it down because the first one I might forget. I'm going to write it down. Go ahead. Do you like do you like the non Caleb Williams quarterback prospects at the top projected to go early? Yeah. Jaden Daniels, Drake May. Yeah. And really what I'm doing, I'm, tr- I'm trying to see when you go in in the dynasty rookie draft. Drake May. I, I can Cyborg. tell you right now. I can tell Drake you May. I can tell you right now. Drake, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or even JJ McCarthy. Do you like them enough for the Patriots specifically? Or would the Patriots be better suited? You're, you're running the franchise, franchise mode. Right. You 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 fired up Madden 24. Would you say, you know what? I want to. We need so much across the board. Till I don't want to bring a quarterback, one of these early round quarterbacks who got to be the savior. Uh, I don't want to bring him into a bad situation. The kind of situation that Shador Sanders wants to avoid, you know, listen to Dion. I don't want to bring him in a bad situation. I want to trade down, gather more assets. And maybe we don't even take a quarterback this year, says the Patriots. Maybe it's next year. But when we take one, mm. he's going to be walking into a situation where he's set up to succeed. How do you play this if you're the Patriots? and new head coach Gerard Mayo. Because remember back in the day with the Patriots and Bill Belichick days, you couldn't believe nothing come out their mouth. Right. Maybe things haven't, maybe nothing's right. changed in New England. One thing's changed the more they say, they say the same. Okay, let me, let me tell you, uh, it's funny that you say that. Bill Belichick, you mentioned Bill Belichick and Gerard Mayo within about a minute of one another. So Bill Belichick was around so long that Gerard Mayo was a draft pick of his mm-hmm. in 2008. So a 2008 draft pick, he saw Gerard Mayo win his first Super Bowl with the Patriots in 2014. He saw Gerard Mayo leave, retire, Belichick still the head coach, go work for Optum, then come back, do the media for a little bit, and then come back to Belichick's coaching staff in 2019. So Belichick is there for the draft. He's there for the Super Bowl win. He's there for the retirement. He's there for Mayo on the coaching staff. And then he's there. Finally, he's out when Mayo succeeds him. That ain't normal, Gerard. That ain't normal. Let me tell you something. You said new head coach, Gerard Mayo. Well, you're the new head coach. Coop, coop. Clock is ticking. So it's cute. It's cute when I hear people say this. Uh, you know, and they say it, and they say it so well, so eloquently. You know, you really have to build the roster around the quarterback first before you're ready for the quarterback. The cor- the roster has to be fortified. The roster has yeah. to be structurally sound before you take quarterback. You don't have that much time. You don't have time. Mm. You're on the clock mm. right now. You set, the you're, season you're setting the is table for somebody else now. The season okay. starting now. You don't have a quarterback right now, so I am not for trading down. That's overthinking it. If, it? if I'm sitting okay. there at three, if if I trade down, maybe it's to four, maybe to four. If I've got, if I'm sitting at three and I got two guys I like on the board and they're both quarterbacks, maybe I trade down one spot because if it's either or, if they're equally rated. But if my guy's not there, there's no way. You take a quarterback and you figure it out because if you get it right, Michael, that quarterback is going to elevate your franchise. Everybody's going to be better. The coaches will be better. The receivers will be better. The defense will be appreciative. Take the quarterback. Go ahead. Here's my t-shirt. Take Drake. Take Drake. You like take Drake. Yeah, take Drake. She probably you should, Drake. you should trademark that. You should is that is that, is that what they're saying in Boston? Take Drake. That's what I'm saying. That's it. In Boston, should, they, I think you, they, they crazy. They talking about trade back. No. <laughs> yeah. Stay where you are. Yeah. Take Drake. All right. That's the right thing to do. Okay. Is that what you going to take in the dynasty draft? I sure am. Number two Ooh. pick. 
Drake That's my guy. May. Hey, I'm taking Drake look, May. Minnesota. Wait, should I believe you right now? Because you, you've already told me not to believe anything anybody says this time of year. You put out a smoke. This is a smoke screen in Dynasty. This is a smoke screen. Hey, hey, listen, Michael, I'm going to take Drake. However, I'm open for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm over I love, but I love also in, in reality, I love the Minnesota story about, uh, you know, Josh McCown's connection. You know, people like to connect dots this time of year. Josh, McCown, Josh McCown's connection being his high school, one of his high school coaches, Drake Mays. So that was fascinating. Whoever lands in Minnesota is, is, is set up for success uh, specifically. But no, I, I, I like Drake May. I like him. I think he could be pretty good. Um, I don't like him as much as Jay Daniels, who I think is kind of just right there with Caleb Williams. Like, not even like, I think it's 1A, what? 1B. I think, oh. I think Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels is the same as Harrison and Neighbors. It's like, it's a matter uh, of preference. Uh, and that's it's not right either. That's like, listen, I mean, I mean, what is I, it? I, I, I don't listen, with you. We, we're not I talking about true. Kim Mulkey no more. We're not talking about Kim Mulkey I, no more. Stop I'm telling you the truth. denying LSU football. And I didn't even go to LSU. I went to Loyola. But you, every know, time LSU come up, you feel they, some kind of way about anybody giving props to, I don't I know, don't, the Heisman Trophy winner. I, I, Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels is a notch below. To say he's equal to Caleb, he's not equal to Caleb Williams. He's not. And I wonder, right there. Caleb Williams. 1A and 1B. I hey, say exactly. 1A and 1A. I say 1A and 1B. Hey, hey who, who's on the, um, I'm just wondering, do you see any USC players projected? Any uh, wide receivers projected? Oh, don't do that 30? thing. Don't do that thing. I'm wondering. Don't make that, don't do that. I, I can't, see, that's what happens when you got too much time on your hands. You start to reach for stuff like, well, look what this, and I, and I said it with McCarthy. I did. I, I admit that I said, so I'm not gonna hype, I'm not you gonna sure talk did. out of both sides of my you mouth did. or contradict myself. That's your but no, but but I That's but I also argument. don't but I also don't like using it to ding somebody. Like I'm it's not, not gonna I'm be not, perfect I'm, in the NFL, but I don't want to discredit somebody either for having talent around them because the goal is it's to put not, talent around them. It's not a discredit. It is. You were discrediting. You were discrediting Jaden. Oh, context. Okay, that's a nice I, way to put it. It's context. You were, you were well, you saying have, that Jaden Daniels ain't as good as Caleb Williams because Jaden Daniels had two first not, round receivers. He's not as he's not as good as Caleb Williams. I didn't say he's not good. He's not as good as Caleb Williams. So it, it, because Caleb wait, Williams, but it's the because it's the it's the rationale you will say so but, I'm lying. That's not, no, that's no, not what you said. Is, that's the, so I'm lying. Resume, you didn't just say resume, Caleb like how, how many first round receivers did Caleb Williams have? That's not that's, that. not that's I'll not that's not what you that's not that's not what you said. So Drake, I'm lying. Drake May, Chris. I, I think it, I think Chris Sims is off on this one. Um, but um, all I'm saying don't is listen to Caleb Chris. Williams, take his resume. May. His resume speaks for itself. His resume speaks for itself. This year, last year, Oklahoma, it speaks for itself. But if you throw him a Malik Neighbors over here and a Brian Thomas Jr. over here, you take the natural ability that he has and you give him two dogs like that, I think the numbers will be insane, just as Jaden Daniels' numbers were. Now, well, his numbers if, were if insane. We flip if we flip him, if we flip him, if we flip him, you put Caleb in, in Jaden's situation this year, you put Jaden in Caleb's situation, I think you'd see that there's a difference. There, there's a there's a gap. As a matter of fact, I got so Jaden Daniels so the third so best what? quarterback. And Chris Sims so has his saying? rankings. The Michael yeah. Holly rankings are Caleb Holly rankings? Williams won. Williams won, based on my film study. Williams yeah. won. Drake made two. Well, Drake May Jayden has a lot Daniels. of people. I, I, Jay Drake, Daniels I don't know, and I, Michael Penix Jr. Okay. So this is on camera, so I guess you're being serious because this is on tape. I am. Because I don't know serious. if you're trying to like throw people off your scent for the dynasty draft. Because no, I know you're I'm serious. No, okay. I'm just you the truth. No, because but a lot of people a lot of people are giving Drake May uh, extra credit because of the lack of talent or supporting cast he had around him. Um, that went to the NFL and, and that, that he struggled with last year. So basically what you're saying, Michael, and I think also, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like what you're saying is that they're what? all system quarterbacks. Is that they're all system oh, quarterbacks. Circumstantial. That's what it sounds like. Circumstantial quarterbacks. quarterbacks. Uh, you about to say something. I was going to move on, but go ahead. What you no, I was just going to say, and, and just the final thing is, you know, maturity, maturity fact should factor in too, or just experience. You know, when the season starts, um, Drake May is going to be 22. When the season starts, 
uh, Jaden Daniels is going to be 24. So, you know, two years of experience, it will look a little bit different. There are some things that Jaden Daniels has been through at Arizona State and then at LSU that that Drake May hasn't experienced in just a couple mm. of years at one school in North Carolina. One year, he had the squad. The next year, squad kind of goes away and he has his resources are more limited. I mean, I just think context. That's all context, not hating. Okay. This point no, I don't out. mind it. I don't mind it. All right. So let's go from Hayden to some, somebody I know you appreciate uh, and somebody I know you love. We both love. Um, I think we got to talk about the job that our guy Rand Carthen is doing in Tennessee. Now, this story mm -hmm. for some may be as much, if not more, about Kansas City as it is for Tennessee. But the Tennessee Titans have acquired Legereus Sneed from the two time Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs for a third round pick in 2025 and a pick swap in 2024. And Ooh. but it's not just Legereus Sneed. Mason Rudolph to back up Will Levis talk about supporting your quarterback and Levis got that same kind of like benefit of the doubt at Kentucky. Like, oh, look at all the mm -hmm. talent that left him his last year before his last year. Mason Rudolph to back him up. Tony Pollard to go with Tajay Spears. They gave a lot of money to Calvin Ridley, beat out the Patriots for him. A lot of money for Calvin Ridley, but I mean, it's free agency. You're going to overpay. Free agency and yeah, overpay is sort of redundant to me. 29. Uh, Lord, Lloyd Cushenberry. Okay. Got in Lloyd. Brought Good in Lloyd Cushenberry. Good. Sebastian Joseph Day on a one year deal. Kenneth, don't call me Keith Murray. <laughs> the most beautiful thing in this world. Uh, I was going to say, oh, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then in the secondary, to go along with Sneed, they bring in Shadobi Owuzie. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, all I know is a couple of weeks ago, you were like, what, is, what are the Titans doing letting Derrick Henry go? What are they doing? What are they Derrick doing? Derrick Henry for, well, still, Derrick Henry replaced by Tony Pollard. Don't love that. No, that's, not, that's that. not a one for one. That's not a one for one. Don't but now that. it seems like based on your feed, you're like, uh, what are the Chiefs doing? Letting Jadari, uh, Legereus Sneed go. Listen, I know what they're doing. I understand it. I understand what they're doing, but but part of this process is why for, for Super Bowl champions, especially for back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions, because everybody, it floats everybody. I know Steve Spagnolo, he got a contract extension. You know, uh, Patrick Mahomes restructured his contract. Uh, Chris Jones got a contract. Everybody wants a contract. Everybody can't get one. So Jerry Sneed deserves it. He was great. You know, McDuffie and Sneed. Remember, I raved about them after the Super Bowl. How they silenced yeah, yeah. the 49ers. Silence. We didn't hear. Because as yeah. a matter of fact, now just remind me. Did Debo play in the Super Bowl? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. He, he got hurt. He got yeah. He, yeah, okay. he played and he got hurt. He got hurt. Ayuk got hurt. He played. Was Ayuk in Ayuk the game? Ayuk played. Yeah. 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 One of the greatest okay. catches. No, that was a week before. Okay. I'm sorry. That was so that was anyway. Yeah, I you play. Right, yeah, exactly. Play. Uh, but yeah. Sneed, Sneed and McDuffie, uh, a combo that really helped Steve Spagnolo do all sorts of things defensively. He could scheme it up because those guys were fantastic throughout the regular season and in the postseason. But you gotta let you have to let one of those you have to let some of those players go if you're trying to keep it together. It's just it's almost impossible. I can tell you right now. The Chiefs will not win three straight. They won't three. They won't. They won't. I win told three you. Straight Super Bowl. I told you. I'm betting most of my bets. Your money. I'm betting on the Chiefs until they until they prove me wrong. I don't care what know, their record is going I into know, the playoffs. I know. It sounds good. They will win. It, it sounds uh, it, good, it, it, but it it's, took. It's the most logical. It's the most logical it, against all I, odds, well, against history. Because well, I, I would is actually. It, is it the I, most logical? It's never happened. In, no. In, like, in, I, right. Exactly. In years? Uh, yeah. And, and yet, it's the most. It's the most logical pick is the Chiefs versus the field. I actually I like your feed item. This is why Super Bowl three peats are nearly impossible. I would say it's why it is possible. Um, because of when you make these types of choices, see, I think you get I think teams get in trouble when they just try to run it back and they, they either complacent or they get sentimental and they say, yeah. oh, we got to keep everybody and we got to like, you know, overspend or overextend at the expense of other positions. Like they were up against the cap. They were limited. 
They got depth and youth at, in the secondary. They got one of, if not the best defensive coordinator in, in the NFL that hasn't gotten another shot at a head coaching job, which he should. Um, it's like, no, we're not going to run it back. We're going to make a hard decision and let's sneak. Greater than defensive coordinators. No, no, no. But I'm saying you got a guy. No, I'm not saying you don't need players, but they have players that they've developed internally. And they got a draft coming up for Brett Veach to, 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 to do his thing again. Okay. The only problem I have with it from the Kansas City side, again, props to the Titans and what they're doing this offseason, even though you don't win it in March, um, is that it feels like a third pick is like a third. That's, a, that's, that's, that's highway robbery. Rand Carthen, you want it for highway robbery. A, a third round pick in 2025 is nothing for Legereus Sneed. Probably could have got that as a compensatory pick, but they get cap flexibility. Um, they got enough depth in the secondary. They have enough youth on defense in general. They have a, de- they have a so. system, a developmental and organizational infrastructure that allows them to withstand losses. They kept Chris Jones. So whoever the hell is behind Chris Jones job is that much easier. Um, they bring yeah. in Hollywood Brown on offense. We'll see what they do oh, during the draft. Like I, Hollywood Brown is a big pickup. All I'm saying is it's these types of moves that make a three-peat possible. These types of moves is what makes sustained excellence and dominance possible, is making the hard decisions, is, is looking at every year as a new year. You're not going to tell me that the 2023 Kansas City Chiefs were the same team as the 2022 uh, right. Kansas City Chiefs. They weren't. No. Right. They were not but the same team. And they certainly weren't the same team they were the first time they won it. What? <laughs> Hollywood what? went to Marquise Brown and said, "Keep my name out your mouth." <laughs> okay, you ain't Hollywood. You are you're okay. Overland All Park right. Brown. You in Kansas City? You're Overland <laughs> Park right. Brown, maybe. I don't. Not I don't Brown. want to hear. I oh, don't want stop. to hear you. Hollywood Brown. I was about to. Say, I about these a phrase I shouldn't. I don't want to hear you talk about Hollywood Brown this year when he bought it out and catching the passes that Patrick Mahomes receivers dropped all of 2023. Hollywood Brown? Really? He's that, a good player. That, he's not. He's not. He's okay. not a good player. All right. He's not. No, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm glad you feel that way. It just lets me further know that I don't have to worry about it's, you in this dynasty league. Um, okay. He's been hurt no, a lot. It's, it's, he's he's, it's going to be hurt difficult, though. He's been it's hurt It's going to be diff- difficult to go from Legereus Sneed to a developmental guy. Now, McDuffie, no, they, I got no problems with McDuffie. But replacing They got Sneed, Watson. I, I forget the other young guys, man. They got they got they got they got some guys in right. the secondary. They, they do. got some guys in the secondary. They don't have they don't have any. No, me forgetting is not an indictment. I just you right, know, Okay. Old. Yeah, I think it may be. No. They don't have anyone no, just who's old. on the level this is more of Legarius Sneed. But wait, but we'll speaking about so I mentioned Hollywood Brown being hurt. Last thing I want to touch on before we go. Um, speaking of injury. Uh, how do you feel about uh, the hip t- hip drop tackle. So this morning it was banned unanimously. The competition committee yeah. unanimously banned the hip drop tackle. Thankfully, because yeah. like this is one of those where it's like you know what? Take your I I Michael didn't play the game. Take your it's gonna be flag football. Take your you know what's next and what a defender supposed to do rhetoric. And stick it somewhere. Yeah, the hip drop tackle—it's an awful play. And don't and miss me with that. Well, what is it? I don't even know what that is. I, what is the hip hip drop tackle? Oh, uh, here we go. No, here we go. No, here it's it a dangerous play. It is a dangerous play. And how many times do we have to see somebody grab a player from behind and drop his weight on the back of their legs, and somebody limp off with a high ankle sprain? Or worse, I just mentioned Tony Pollard. Or worse, what what did Troy Benson say that, that the injury uh, rate is twenty to twenty-five times either greater or twenty-five percent something? But it's exponentially worse because of this bullshit hip drop tackle. That is, it's new. This is some new shit. This is not a, a this is not an age-old technique. This is not a, 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 a tackling technique. I get that it's harder and harder for de- defensive players. I understand that. But the answer is not a player, a play, I beg your pardon, that injures other players. And what's fascinating to me is having the NFLPA like fight this tooth and nail 
when it's to protect players. Now, okay, I got no comeback for the inconsistency when it comes to protecting players. I got no comeback. I got no comeback for yeah, we agree. short weeks and short turnarounds and certain plays being legal and other ones not. I, 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 I got no comeback for that. But this one is so egregious to me. This play, it, it is, and, I, and I, I've been on this in private, even though you and I haven't talked about it, this play sickens me every time I see it. Even though somebody may get up from it, every time I see it, I'm like, that shit just should not be allowed. That should be outlawed. So thank goodness the competi competition committee has sense enough to unanimously ignore the players and tell them what was best in this case and say, you know what? No, find another way to get the guy on the ground. Yeah, well said, and I, I think I, I agree with you. Uh, everything, really, not much to add to that because it's just uh, you covered everything. I, I can't say from the player's perspective. I can say and see from the player's perspective that it feels like a bunch of losses for them, a bunch of losses where every year something is taken away or something is mm -hmm. emphasized or enforced, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? And I think there are some what am I supposed to do cases. For example. When defensive players are called for after a sack and they're called for roughing the passer because after they bring the passer down, their body weight falls. I mean, gravity happens. And so you bring it, you fall to the ground and you happen to fall on the player who's underneath you and you're supposed to control your body weight. I think that's BS. I think that's going too far. So some of these things need to be taken away and just focus on the dangerous plays, not the plays where, well, the quarterback must be protected because sure, it's just sure. unfair if your weight lands on them. That's stupid. Or sometimes if you hit them on the shoulder or if it right. looks like you come up right. around the face. Or you mask, brush up you against them lightly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's right. rough in right. the passer. That is right. inexcusable. Right. That needs to be taken right. out of the game, but I'm all for it. If it's a dangerous place, obviously a dangerous place it should be taken out, and I'm glad it was. Okay. All right, man. Uh, appreciate you, brother. This was fun. Um, gave them their money's worth today, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> hey, Mike. A lot of content. Yes. Yes. Take Drake. Yo, I think I really think you should you should trademark that. And are you serious? Because I mean, like, I could use it, you know, like, we're, we're drafting in the range behind you. It'd be nice to have a, a, no, a, a, a board. Huh? No, I think he's, he's going to be great. I really do. I you're taking him wherever Williams. he goes? You're taking Drake wherever well, he goes? Yeah, I'm, I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he, you think he I'm goes thinking. to New England? Wait, because yes. your conviction, well, so we'll talk about this another day. Your conviction suggests that there's been a conversation that, I, that I'm not privy to. You just, you just, you just real high on him all of a sudden and I'm just like who you been talking to who you who you been talking to interesting mm, like you're you talking about me with my information that I'm withholding yeah it kind of felt it feel like feel like you may have had a, a conversation that really got you excited about young Drake man take we'll Drake later take Drake except when except when Kendrick Lamar is dissing him but that's a conversation <laughs> for another day that sure <laughs> is a great conversation Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.